this Lent, we've been talking about different forms of prayer that you can take with you wherever you are, ways that you can learn to pray as you go. This week, we're going to focus on a tool to help guide us in prayer that gets your whole body involved. We're going to be talking about the labyrinth and walking the sacred path. The labyrinth is a centuries-old tool used by Christians to help guide them in prayer and meditation. Behind me, you see a labyrinth that's modeled off of one built in the 12th century that still stands in the Chartres Cathedral in France, a place where worshipers and pilgrims go still to this day in order to pray and to worship. At first glance, a labyrinth looks kind of like a maze, with this very significant difference, though. A maze is full of misdirections and dead ends. A labyrinth, on the other hand, has a single path that leads to the center. Now, the labyrinth contains many metaphors that connect with our faith. We can talk about the Good Shepherd who leads us in paths of righteousness. God teaches us the way in which we should go. Jesus talks about the narrow way. Jesus is the way to the Father. And though our life and our life of faith may be full of many twists and turns and moments of conversion, if we continue in the path with deliberate and intentional steps, we'll find ourselves following in the direction that leads to the center where we meet with God. Now, there isn't anything magical about the labyrinth. It doesn't have any special powers on its own. Instead, it's a simple tool that opens the possibility for a sacred experience with God through prayer. Now, there are three legs to this journey. First, there's the inward journey. On this part of the journey, we release and let go of the things that hold us back and distract us. On our way toward the center, we discard the roles and the titles that usually define us. We let go of the demanding voices that surround us in our days. We release feelings of guilt and shame, of depression and self-hatred. We let all of these things go so that we can enter the center in a spirit of openness and childlike wonder. The center of the labyrinth is the second stage of the journey. In the center, we find a place of rest, of meditation and peace. It's also a place of illumination. After the inward journey of release and letting go, we find ourselves open and ready to receive a gift from God. So once you make it to the center, sit, rest, stay there as long as you like until you are full. The third leg of the journey is the outward journey. We walk outward using the same path we used on the way in. Only this time, we're different. On our way out, we refuse to pick up the things we discarded on our way in. We're not picking up those feelings of resentment or anger or guilt or shame. Instead, we're leaving with whatever gift God gave us in the center. And we leave ready and wondering how we might integrate that gift into our lives. Walking and praying the labyrinth teaches us to live from the center where we know God's peace and forgiveness, where we know God's presence and love. This labyrinth will be set up on Wednesday morning as well as all day Thursday and all day Friday here in the community room at First United Methodist Church. If you're unable to come and be here in person or for whatever reason are unable to walk the labyrinth, we invite you to download the printable version of this labyrinth and then trace that labyrinth with your finger or with a pen and follow the same steps and let that labyrinth lead and guide you in prayer. That moving into the labyrinth requires nothing more than putting one foot in front of the other and following the path and remaining open to the journey to the quiet center 
where you'll meet with God. I hope you'll come. See you next time.